February the 6th, 1958, a day forever etched in Manchester United history. The Busby Babes, Manchester United's greatest, but how good were they? And is it misunderstood by some as to how good that team actually was? A few weeks ago, I put a tweet out saying Manchester United's top five greatest ever players. And Duncan Edwards was in there in our top five, to which I, I would put it down as, a, as a, a naive and uneducated view from a Manchester United fan saying... Duncan Edwards shouldn't be in there, a fantastic player, but didn't do enough in a Manchester United shirt because he died at 21. Well, that that's the frustration that I think the older generation, and certainly my granddad, who, who started supporting Manchester United because of the Busby Babes, um, always had throughout his life, that you sort of get lost within what was a tragic accident with the plane crash. The, the, the greatness of that side and, and some of the players gets lost in that, almost like there's an empathy or a, or a sympathy towards them. When, without question, when you actually look back at it, the team was arguably one of the best teams there's ever been, a fantastic side. And just picking up on that Duncan Edwards point, well, yeah, he did. He was only just 22 when he died. Um, but to say, oh, he shouldn't be in a Manchester United top five greatest ever players because he died so young and he didn't, he didn't uh, you know, didn't fulfil his potential, I suppose. That's what people are saying. Here's an interesting fact for you. Duncan Edwards, although he died at just 22, played more games for Manchester United than Eric Cantona, who is considered a Manchester United great. In fact, I've got it here. Duncan Edwards, 151 games for Manchester United, in which he scored 20 goals, but that's, that wasn't what his game was about. Um, Eric Cantona, 143. So that just, that just shows you, yes, Duncan Edwards taken way before his time, way before his time. They reckon Bobby Moore would never have played for England if Edwards had carried on. But he played over 150 games for Manchester United at the time of his death, which just shows you what a colossus he was as such a young man. Had absolutely everything. I mean, people, there's been comparisons in the past, but this was a, a lad who just had absolutely everything. Power, shot, uh, positional sense, tackling... Boundless energy, could pass the ball, absolutely superb. And every, everybody who saw him said it. In fact, but that's not, you know, Duncan Edwards, you've seen the United stand, the books I've got, some passed down to me from my granddad, some I've acquired over the years. And just to play, obviously I've never seen Duncan Edwards play, but you just, you, you don't, you just, you just know, you just know, and you listen to people within the game and you, you listen to people who've seen them play. And this is what it's about. This is what this video is about today. Yes, it's February the 6th and we should always remember it and it is tragic what happened. But I think Harry Gregg, who by many accounts and, and was said to be you know, the hero of the aftermath of the crash with the pilot going in there, the potential for it to explode for those who didn't realise what happened, um, bad conditions over in Munich, two aborted attempts to fly up, uh, to, to get the plane off, the third attempt slush skidded off the runway, smacked into a house and a tree, uh, and it actually ended up just under a shed, which was full of fuel. So it could have it could have gone up. Um, obviously, some people died instantly. Um, but Harry Gregg went in there and pulled people out, like Samat Busby and Bobby Charlton. But he always said, always says, he's still alive. What a man. That, that, was, that was a tragedy that wasn't... It sort of gets lost, especially with the, the Brazil brain crash um, with Chappie Cohen's it's tragic what happened to a football team but you should talk about the football team for what it was and what the players were people died in that plane crash journalists uh members of the the, the plane craft uh, and normal civilians died in that plane crash it was an absolute tragedy as as many will, will testify to um but it, it sort of like i say like my granddad said and like a lot of people say it gets lost in the tragedy just how good the team were. Um, many of them part of the FA uh, of the Manchester United youth side that Samat Busby put together uh, in the inception of the FA Youth Cup. They won it for the first five years in a row, but which then coincided with a lot of them moving into the first team. They won the FA. They won the FA Cup. They didn't win the FA Cup. They won the first division in uh, the 1956. 55, 56, 56, 57. In the first year of winning that league title, they had an average age of 21 years of age. And there's a great quote here. I mean, whatever you think about Harry Redknapp, there's a great quote, quote here. And it really typifies a lot of what my granddad said to me because a lot of people support, started supporting Manchester United 
around the time of the tragedy. And you can you can relate to that because you look at what happened with Chappie Cohen's and a team that nobody ever, ever heard of sudden, suddenly had, there's an outpouring of grief and uh, you feel for that club. You want it to get back on its knees. You want it to succeed. You empathise with it. And that did happen with Manchester United after 1958. However, the big thing, and the, my granddad and a lot of others supported Manchester United before that because this was going on a long time before that. This, um, as Harry, I'll read the quote for you. Um, utterly inspired by this un this extraordinary young team that was unlike any that has been seen before, and that's 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 what it that's what it did. That's what Busby did with the Busby Babes way before '58. Like I said, they'd won the the uh, I call it the Premier League. It effectively, was the Premier League of its day, the first division, the old first division. They'd won it for the previous two years. Um, with this young, exciting team. Some of it from the youth and local, some of it brought in from around the country, like Edwards from Dudley and, and Charlton from up north. Um, but it encaptured the, the, the nation's um, imagination because this was like a fantastic footballing side, but built up of so, so much youth and excitement that a lot of people started following Manchester United. Now, obviously, and this was the day, this was the days before TV. So unless you were, uh, unless you were traveling up to Manchester, which in those days was, was was a big old journey or you were local you were getting a lot of these in, in match reports and newspapers and things like that and, and a lot of people fell for them a lot of people fell for them um and yes so so when when it happened in 58 it, it, it was obviously horrific absolutely horrific eight players uh from the manchester united side uh died, died in uh, as a result of the munich tragedy duncan edwards um tommy taylor roger byrne Eddie Coleman, uh, David Pegg, Jeff Bent, Liam Whelan and Mark Jones, of which many of them were very important players. In fact, Jimmy Armfield said it was 1958, February, when the tragedy happened. There was a World Cup that summer. Jimmy Armfield, who played with Duncan Edwards within the England setup, said that with Tommy Taylor, Roger Byrne and Duncan Edwards, I've got no doubts that we would have won that 1958 World Cup, which again, I think that's what... This is what that, this video is about, really, for me today. It's not about the tragedy because, well, it is about the tragedy because it's important that we remember them. But it's also in, it's beyond that. It's all, like I said, what my granddad said and what a lot of other people have said. The the tragedy was tragic, obviously, but the team, the loss of that football to Manchester United was a loss of of of, of epic proportions. In their last after the Munich tragedy, Manchester United obviously had to fulfil their league calendar. And I think there was like 13 or 14 league fixtures after that, of which they only won one. At the time of the tragedy, they were they were right up there for three titles in a row. And obviously that sort of a run afterwards, it, they finished, I think they ended up finishing ninth. They did get to the FA Cup final. And in the first leg against AC Milan, they, they actually won, but they lost the second leg. Real Madrid, who went on to dominate European Cup football after 58, I think they won five in a row. Manchester United were the favourites in 58 for the European Cup. Real Madrid went on to win it. Real Madrid actually put forward a proposal, much the same as what happened with Chappie Cohen's, that Manchester United should be awarded that European Cup. Uh, it never got off the ground. But, you know, whatever you think about Real Madrid, that was put forward. And to be honest, I think, I think you know, if that was the modern day, then Manchester United probably would have been awarded it. And what a testament to those lads it would have been. It should, it should have been done. Different world then. I really do think it should have been done. But... As I said there about Jimmy Armfield, when he talks about Roger Byrne, uh, captain of the Manchester United side, Tommy Taylor, an absolutely brilliant striker, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, Duncan Edwards. These were three players that would have probably won England the, F the World Cup in 1958. That's three. You don't need to say anymore. That's three amazing players lost to the Munich tragedy. Without mentioning people like Eddie Coleman, Snake Hips, you know, because he could go past people, David Pegg on the, on, the, on the wide, Liam Whelan, another young player, um, Mark Jones, a colossal sort of defensive midfielder, centre-back sort of player. 24 he was. So, so much youth talent and so much taken away from Manchester United that it ripped the heart out of the club. Even like Sir Bobby Charlton, they weren't really first-team players then. They were part of it, but they weren't considered... He certainly wasn't considered one of the better players at that time. He was only 22. Um, obviously went on to probably be one of the best Mr. Manchester United, Mr. England, probably one of the best players England's ever produced, which again just shows again what Manchester United lost that day. But I want to talk about Tommy Taylor a little bit because I think it's really... There's so many players sort of... I wouldn't, I, I'd never dis say, be disrespectful to say they were forgotten, but um, it is important, so, so important, that we sort of look at how good 
Manchester United were and how good the Busby babies were, the babes were. Like I say, two times league champions. They would have won it that year. Uh, obviously, their season decimated after the February tragedy. Um, an absolutely amazing side that would have gone on to dominate not just English football but European football as well. And England certainly would have benefited from the from that side as well, as we've already discussed. But uh, Tommy Taylor, and, and there are other players within the Busby Babes that by all means, and please, I implore you, go and research them. But Tommy Taylor, I just want to talk about him because very recently, Wayne Rooney's obviously broken the all-time Manchester United goal record. Tommy Taylor was just 26 when he died in the Munich tragedy. His goals-to-game ratio is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. And not just for England, uh, not just for Manchester United, for England as well. He was seen as the natural successor to Nat Lofthouse as he was coming towards the end of his career. And Taylor's stats are this. 16 goals in 19 games for England. That's nearly a goal a game. For Manchester United, 112 goals in 166 games. He would have absolutely obliterated Rooney and Charlton's record if he hadn't, uh, if we hadn't lost into the Munich tragedy. So... And, and a striker of epic proportions and somebody again like Edwards who deserves to get mentioned in the Manchester United legends and greats category and yes there's the period of time and, 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 and I, I suppose there are United fans who probably aren't that aware of what, what we lost that, t- that day and how good that side was but it was riddled with talent absolutely riddled with talent um, I also want to just talk about as well that as we've as we've seen with the Chappie Cohen thing, and, and and it's odd to sort of be mentioning that a few times because it sort of it does bring back what happened to United. But the aftermath of that horrific accident was that not only the eight players that we lost tragically, but the players who 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 survived but never really recovered from what happened that day. Um, Dan, Dennis Violet uh, afforded himself twenty four years of age. Many said never as good again. Kenny Morgan's. 18 years of age, a fast, tricky Welsh winger, um, never the same again, never played the same again. Jackie Blanchflower, never played again, 24 years of old, uh, 24 years of age. Uh, Johnny Berry, 31, oh, quite old for the Busby Babes, but a, a fantastic player in his own right, never played again. Um, and this is this is the uh, the legacy of that. I mean, how, how people like Bobby Charlton, folks... Harry Gregg and and many others carried on after that, knowing that you know, not only have they lost a fantastic set of players, but their friends uh, is a testament to them. And Bobby Charlton always said, uh, very recently in his book, said, I'll, "I'll never get past that guilt that fifty, you know, fifty percent of that plane died and fifty percent of it survived, and it was just luck, and I survived, and they didn't, and um, you never move past that guilt, which is an odd thing. It's not an odd thing to say. It's a uh, I suppose if you've not lived it, you don't know that feeling. But there's no reason to feel guilt, is it? Is there? But I'm sure it's just life, isn't it? It's life and a roll of a dice where you sit on a plane and and that's it. But absolutely fantastic side. I wrote so many things down that I wanted to discuss, and um, I think and hope that I've I've pretty much covered it um, because it's just an an absolute important day for Manchester United that we will always remember it we'll always remember it and it, and it is remembered um, fantastically well by the club and the fans and the footballing world in general but I, what I really wanted to get across was that it's it, the tragedy encapsulates everybody who died in that the co-pilots the staff uh, the, the journalists the civilians that were on there I mean Harry Gregg the Manchester United goalkeeper he went back into the plane that after the crash as, as I said the risk of explosion was there um, he saved a pregnant mother and a, and a young baby as well. Uh, and, and I read an article a few months ago that he'd gone back and seen them. They're in one of them's fifth. I think the unborn baby's fifty, and the and the and the child is um, um, obviously an, an older person as well now. But and he and and that's it. The tragedy was a was a tragedy a tragedy that, that took human life, not just footballers. It took it took human life, and the journalists and everybody else should be remembered. But bringing it back to Manchester United, and like I say, the, 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 I wouldn't say frustration because that's the wrong word, but um, the, the importance that Manchester United fans especially realise that don't ever fall into that trap that's, uh, of sympathy or empathy towards the Busby Babes because of the tragedy that, that destroyed the Busby Babes. Um, 
that should that's almost a separate thing because it's the the important thing is actually looking at the team don't let the tragedy make you feel sympathetic to how good they were as players because as players they proved themselves they weren't potential that they were potential they were potential they, they had the potential to go and dominate european football win cups for their nation and and dominate english football which but but they were already doing that potentially where they could have gone who knows but what they achieved anyway was amazing and they pretty much were at that time the favorites for the european cup the dominant force in english football they were the best team in the world um, and they would have gone on and, and got better and better and better um, but that's the frustration that like i say my granddad always had uh, and like i said frustration is not necessarily the right word was that one that this great team got taken away but two that they, they, they should never there should never be any hint of sympathy and and building them up because of what of the tragedy because they were fantastic players and team before that and like i say roger Byrne, tommy taylor duncan edwards considered three of the best players england had certainly manchester united had but the team was riddled with it whether it's mark jones or eddie coleman or david pegg or, or liam whelan they were they were a fantastic side jeff bent as well um some of them were, you know, reserve players or, or backup players, and some of them were absolutely essential to the team, like Edwards and Taylor and, and Byrne. But a fantastic side, a fantastic side. And all I would say is, an employee to do is get out there today or, or, or in a few weeks' time or tomorrow or whatever. Just talk. there's loads of fantastic articles there, even about individual players. There's books about individual players like Tommy Taylor that I've read that are absolutely amazing. Uh, we got him from Barnsley. He was scoring goals from a ridiculously young age at Barnsley, almost like Rooney in a way, in the way that we got him from Everton. Played from a very young age for Barnsley, came to Manchester United and, and, and just carried on and was was absolutely amazing. And I think he would probably be, you know, people talk about great England greats. He almost deserves to be an England great, even though he died at 26, because his goals to game ratio was, was ridiculous, but certainly a Manchester United great. Uh, and many others within that side. So our, what I would say is that our club is built on youth. And that goes back to the Busby Babes. The greatest story ever told is Manchester United. And the greatest stories ever told have always got a tragic element and a, and, and a resurrection. And we know what that is. But you've got to understand that tragedy. And the tragedy was the tragedy. But what went before was an absolutely colossal side with amazing players, amazing unity. And they stand head and shoulders as the greatest Manchester United side there's ever been. Nobody comes close. And I've seen the treble side. I've seen the 2008 side. The 68 side was fantastic as well. But for those in the know, no, nothing comes close to this. And, all, and, I, and I think that's what I'd leave it on. It's nothing to do with what happened to them on that fateful day on February the 6th in 1958 as to why people say they're the greatest ever. And I think that frustrates people who saw them. Uh, it's Like I say, it certainly did my granddad and I think it does a lot of others who, saw, who, who, who remember what they were like. Um, the tragedy was the tragedy. The team before that that lives on was an was was the greatest Manchester United side ever a, a fantastic side and such a young side as well to win a league division title with an average age of 21 I'll leave you with that unbelievable um and and, and I'll start with what I finished Duncan Edwards sort of the symbol of that side played more games for Manchester United than Eric Cantona and died when he only just turned 22 so they were just an unbelievable side, captured the nation's imagination, and they captured the, imagine, the, na the nation's ma imagination, and so many people of a certain age support Manchester United, not from Manchester, because they captured that imagination, because they did something nobody had ever done before. They were exciting, they played fantastic football, but they played as kids. They were young kids. They were just a young side, and Busby encapsulated that, brought it together, and generated this excitement and uh, it's a legacy that we should all be very proud of and never ever forget thanks for watching this is the united stand get commenting below any questions will come back and, and and you know i know there are people on the comment section who are old enough to remember it as well so get commenting anything you want to ask anything you want to say get commenting below and i know people will reply and and let's let's discuss let's discuss and remember what this great side was thanks for watching i'll speak to you very soon